Hey everybody, today we're going to begin a series of deep dives into the post-processing stack. To kick things off, we're going to discuss the anti-aliasing feature, and as we test, keep in mind that there's a lot to say for the minor details with regard to the overall look of our environments. Out of these effects, some of them show off more prominently than others, and it's important to know when you're overdoing it. As for anti-aliasing, the changes are fairly obvious, especially when you toggle the effect off and on. Take a look at these two scenes side by side and see if you can find any differences. The image on the left is using anti-aliasing. In layman's terms, aliasing is otherwise referred to as jaggies or jagged edges. Once you know how to look for aliasing, it really pops out at you. Now there are two types of anti-aliasing available to us in the new post-processing stack. Fast approximate anti-aliasing, or FXAA, and temporal anti-aliasing, or TAA. FXAA is choice for mobile and VR platforms and requires shade model 3. For information on what that is, I'll leave a link below, but basically it just refers to GPU's capabilities from the period of 2004 to 2006. For the most part, FXAA is perfectly fine for any project, especially since you're able to choose a preset from extreme performance to extreme quality with a single modification. But then there's TAA, or Temporal Anti-Aliasing, which offers settings for jitter, blending, and sharpening. So what's the point of using Temporal Anti-Aliasing, and what's the trade-off with the fast approximation method? The big trade-off with FXAA is the fact that it simply blurs lines. It's fast, but it reduces resolution. Temporal anti-aliasing is a technique where frames are accumulated in a history buffer and interpolated to smooth edges more effectively. This requires motion vectors to be enabled and is more expensive than FXAA. This method is not supported by VR platforms, but like FXAA, it only requires Shader Model 3. Now let's walk through each of the temporal anti-aliasing settings. Jitter spread modifies the diameter in which samples are spread. Smaller values result in a crisp, aliased output, while larger values result in more stable but blurred output. It's worth noting that you won't notice much of a difference in spread if stationary blending is equal to 1. Stationary blending controls how many history samples are blended into the final color output with minimal active motion, while motion blending controls how many history samples are blended with significant active motion. With sharpening, high detail can be recovered from the resulting TAA output. I'll leave links to related resources in the description, and if you have any other questions related to anti-aliasing, feel free to jump on our Discord server and talk with our community. I also want to give a shout out to our patrons this month, so thank you guys for your continued support.